All right, next in our video series, we are going to be at video seven. We're going to finish actually taking our balancer assembly out and taking the uh, flywheel assembly out all together. I just flipped this over right now. Uh, there's a tool that I'm going to be inserting in these holes here, and I'll be coming back to that. It's basically a tool just to hold and lock the counterbalancers from being able to rotate, but I wanted you to at least have a little bit of an underside view of this. You'll see that in a second. So what we need to do is we want to take this tension off this chain so that as we unbolt this, we can get it off the sprocket. And what the manual has us do is has us compress the chain simply like this. And you can see where the tensioner's pushing in. Now, Harley-Davidson has a tool that slips in here and will hold or retain this. And the other thing that we're trying to do is we could take and put this uh, pin holder down in here crankshaft I know moved on me a little bit and have to line up and then what I can do is go ahead and get my socket on here and what I'm doing is stopping that balancer from rotating okay can you hold that just getting some extra hands here to make this easier manual tells us to go ahead and loosen these and they are they're torqued on there pretty good and locked tight so they, I'm expecting them to be tight okay hold tension there. if that's not coming off there what would we use okay. set that loose we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process over here and just let the camera roll you guys can kind of hold it just like you did. Hold that. Thank you guys. All right, so with these tensioners down here, this compressed, the other thing I got to do is I got to get these Allen, excuse me, these torque fasteners out of here so that we'll be able to take this whole plate off. Take a look at this next clip. Instead of deleting it, I left it in there. We ran into a fastener problem that was damaged, and I want to show you the remedy of what we did to get the fastener out without causing any more grief. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. No matter what I do, I just cannot get a good bite on the damaged bolts and the damaged Torx bit. So watch how I handle this. After I sand it down flat to fix the tool, I try again. So I wasn't having much luck how it was, you know, working with the handle push away from me. So by switching this, I'm going to see if I can pull it towards me. And, and now I'm going to put my hand up here and see if I can control it a little better. Are right, you guys ready? Round two is not going a whole lot better. But a mechanic must know to alter or change position or to try different things still with the attempt to protect the equipment and themselves. Would you bet there's a little bit of lock tight on those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, barely at all. The tools have to be replaced. What am I going to do to these fasteners then? They are done. Yeah, we throw it out. So, let's focus in right there, see if you can tighten up a little bit. Back up. Ooh, right there. Let's try that. I mean, since we're doing that, take a look in there. You can see. I can see. And you can see the play in here. Yeah. That was after I sanded the tool to bring it back. You can see where that corner's jacked up or whatnot. Okay. So I'm going to make sure to hold that really tight against there. This is not the end of the world accent. I'm going to really support this. Barely tap. Okay. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quit. Now. With that loose like that, I'm going to go back to hand tools. Let's go ahead and reset. 
Okay. We'll do this last one. A um, lot of control on that trigger control, right? Yeah. If I break this off right now, it just stops me from being able to work. You know what yeah. I mean? So I do not want to do that. Another perfect example of every mechanic should know. If you can't see, you got to get light on the situation. Stop, grab a flashlight, and make it so you can see. I'm not convinced the bolt was turning versus the bit, so I'm going to stop, reevaluate. Hold that flashlight there. Just switched. <coughs> Something was turning. Oh, good! It was the bolt. It looked like the bit went and spun right through there. I was a little bit nervous right there. So with the bolts out, you can see we have, this will drop down because we can be off the center of uh, the balancer shafts here. The chain will free itself from the crankshaft. And this isn't heavy, Brent's just helping me so it doesn't spring apart here. Thank you, sir. And then we'll just set this off to the side. Now, I've already shown you in a previous video what those components look like, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then from here, you'll see that this is just on dowel pins. Okay, you see the dowel pins? Okay, so nothing too spectacular about that. What I am going to do, Britt, do you want to go ahead and take the other one out there? He's going to just go ahead and pop the other one out. Just kind of wiggles it. And he got his apart in assembly. That's nice. He can just set it off to the other side. So we're good and clear here. Now you can see the difference. You can see our uh, bearings in here. And I, I promised you that this is pretty simple to do. Okay. But some of the things we're definitely really going to do is we're going to get our flywheel out of the way so that we can clean all this old ceiling off as we go back to assembly. I'm going to switch over here. Brent, do you mind uh, going on that side just in case I need a hand? I'm going to lift this up. Can you grab the board? Okay, go ahead and grab the board. I'm going to take here and show you on this one, hold the case. On this one, we're able to just simply pull the flywheel out. Remember how I was talking about on some Harleys, though, you have to actually press the crankshaft out? So if you watch our Evil videos uh, on that whole series we've done the Evolution Motor, you can actually see where we take the case or the press, press it out, and that's what we do.